He always sing a song. And our song this morning is Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether. And it talks about bringing Jesus' creation, us, around the table and our connection to Him. And oh, how sometimes we pull against that tether. We want to go our direction and maybe not the direction God would have us go in. So as we sing this hymn this morning, it's not a familiar hymn, but the words are wonderful. And they describe me, and I think they describe us very well. And it's the table. The table that is the extreme example of God's love for us that pulls us every Sunday closer to Him. Our hymn of preparation is number 392. Let's sing the first and third verses. Lane again, I ask, would you play the whole thing? Once again, loving Father, you draw us close through the symbols of your love, the candles, the elements, the cross. How we thank you that there's always something there that we can see that says, 
God through His Son, Jesus, loves me. In His name we pray. Amen. stay in the Old Testament because Lent as we move toward Easter I feel very strongly is New Testament ground. That's when we need to be looking at what the Lord did. So this morning let's look at another old gentleman. Picture that picture that you had two weeks ago when we talked about Jeremiah and what a prophet looks like. And since none of us know what you know what Isaiah or Jeremiah looks like? What you think he looks like? That's exactly what he looked like. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. 
and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I, this is, this is Isaiah speaking. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then... One of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Also, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I. Send me. And God said, Go and tell this people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. It was the year of the dying of the king. When Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up in that incense shrouded sanctuary, it was then when he heard God say, Whom shall I send? And his simple reply was, Here I am, send me. It was the year that the priests robbed the people there in the temple in the name of God. It was the year when Samuel heard the Lord from where he was sleeping by the ark and the temple there at Shiloh. And he heard God say, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It was that year when the fish weren't biting. So they worked all day there in the hot sun, throwing out their nets and pulling them back in, empty. They worked hard, but they still went home hungry. And then when Peter, it was the same year, fell to his knees, surrounded by flopping, tossing fish there in that boat, overloaded with the catch of a lifetime. And what did he do? He walked away from it left it all behind. And he and his brother and their friends, they did all of this when they heard those simple words that George read just a second of all ago. From now on, you're going to be catching people. Now, it seems to me that what Isaiah, they're kneeling on that cold marble floor and that dimly lit, lit incense-shrouded sanctuary had in common with Samuel and Samuel had been sleeping by the ark there in the sanctuary at Shiloh and what he had in common with Simon Peter who was kneeling there in the sunlit bilge of the boat there on the Sea of Galilee what they all had in common that all of them were confronted unexpectedly with the power and with the presence, the very presence of God. And then, with no more than that of an instant, all three of them gave their lives completely to that one question. Whom shall I send? Folks, think about it. What does it mean to be called? Such an experience, I think probably we will admit, has not often been a part of our lives. I know it has not been a part of my life. I know it has not. At least not the way it happened to those fellows. You know, 
to be made an offer. Give it careful consideration. Add up the positives and the 